about what's going on with your swing. Okay, uh, let me start. I'm a, a 16 handicap, trying okay. to desperately get better. Love <laughs> to be able to shoot in the low 80s. Um, That's not a good enough goal for me. I know. I, I want to get you wow. in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> I love, love to hear you say that. Um, I, I think I've gotten pretty good at the 9 to 3 swing. Okay. Uh, I love that video you did with the uh, doctor. I mean, I felt like I was taking a lesson with you by just watching <laughs> the video. Um, but my swing kind of goes to hell in a handbasket under pressure. And when I take a full swing, not so good. And I don't have a lot of distance, so I okay. presume I'm not shifting my weight very well and I'm not coming down the ball very well. Okay. Um, I, I have a fairly good short game, which saves me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a look. Let me watch you hit a couple. Okay. Let's uh, I've been working with Chris Tyler. Oh, good. Who I think is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, Chris is great. He's and he's got very, a lot very of fans. Good to me. Uh, what kind of swings do we want here? Let's take a full swing. Okay. This is my first swing of the day. Oh well, go ahead and loosen up then. We got all day. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Uh, it's probably about as good as you're going to get out of me. <laughs> I do not hit my irons in particular very far. Oh dear. How long have you been playing? Oh, 30 years. Have you really? Yeah. 30 years? Yeah. Good. All right, let's take a look here, what's okay. going on. Setup, setup's not too bad here, but we got a little bit of, we could use a little bit more axis tilt, but this, overall it's not bad. Uh -huh. But when the club goes back, across my chest. Well, before you've even moved your hands, yeah. the club's moved a foot and a half, almost, probably two feet, and your hands have moved an inch. Uh -huh. And your body's moved zero. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So, in golf swing speak, that math doesn't add up very well. Okay. Yeah. I've heard you say that so many times. <laughs> So, but this is really common, so this would be really good because yeah. a lot of people make this exact same mistake where yeah. they get fixated on what they're doing with that golf club. Right. And the problem is when you're concerned about what that golf club's doing, it'll never do what you want. Right. It doesn't listen for shit, mm -hmm. okay? So to get that golf club to listen, you gotta speak to your body and let the body talk to mm -hmm. you, not your hands. So as you're going back, by the time the takeaway's done, yeah. our body's barely turned at all, yeah. right? So now we've got all arms and hands now you start to try to make a compensation for it. Go way back with my head. Your head yeah. moves off the ball a lot and you made a big hip turn. Right. Okay, so now we've got no power stored in our, in our trunk, in our core. So we've got no choice but to power the downswing with our arms and hands. So you have the classic cast the club from the top yeah. and lose all your lag, right? And then yeah. you get the little scoop and flip. So this and the chicken wing, all yeah. of this stuff is super common. And yeah. it's all the same stuff. It's all related to the same thing. When you initiate the swing with your hands and arms, your body is never going to do what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. You're going to be fixated on where the club's going all over the place, and then all of a sudden we're, mm -hmm. we're in trouble. So we're going to fix all this stuff. Though. So let's look it down the line real quick. Club goes back inside as you'd expect. Arms deep, hands are deep. Hands are, yeah. yeah. Head stands up about yeah. three or four or five inches, and then you got the classic over the top mode. Right. right. With the wide open club face. This is great because this is like the prototype. You're doing all the things I talk about all the time perfectly. <laughs> it's a perfect demonstration of it. The wide open face over the top. 
chopping move there and then you're swinging across. So, we are going to change every single one of these things in your swing the next hour and a half. The horrible thing is I know all of this too. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what we're gonna do first. Yeah. I want you to stand in front of yeah. the mirror, throw that club down, because you don't need that for a while. And here's what we're gonna do first. We are going to tackle waking up your body because your body right now doesn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And you don't feel the right thing mm -hmm. in your body. And that's what we gotta do first, is get you to see it. And then once you see it, you can feel it, mm -hmm. and then we can repeat it. Okay. So let's go ahead and set up first. Okay. I'm gonna get just a little bit more access to it. So just slide your hips. Oh, to slide the hips, not to, to yep. play up. Exactly, so that's just a tiny bit. We don't need a ton, but that's perfect there. Now, I feel weight on my left foot now. You're gonna feel a little bit more yeah. than you're probably used to. So now the only thing I want you to focus on first is rotation, mm -hmm. okay? So as you go back, I want you to worry about just turning your shoulders. Does that include weight going to the back of my right foot? Yeah, you're gonna definitely shift to the right while you're doing this, but yeah. don't go too far back. See how your toe's up in the air? Yeah. That's too much. Okay. Pretty good there. My head going back. Uh, Stand over here and watch for a second. Go ahead and set up again. Let me watch you again. Relax yourself. Ooh, wow. Yeah, yeah, you gotta relax. And I'm trying to keep the right knee pointing in. Okay. Okay, stop right there. You, you look like you're gritting your teeth. You're I trying am. To <laughs> relax. This is a golf swing, not an alligator wrestling match. There you go. Go ahead and set up again. Just keep, stay nice and relax, and just turn turn your chest like you're going to talk to me. There you go. Just turn and talk to me. There you go. That's rotation. You just not trying to wrench everything back. In fact, it should happen. It's just gliding. You're just turning like you're going to turn and talk, or you're going to hand me something. Mm -hmm. No more complex than that. There you go. It seems to me when I try and do this, I always end up turning my head, and then with it, I turn my hips. Sure. I've been trying to kind of keep this knee pointed in to avoid to having the hips turn. Yeah, your, the, your hips look way better here than what they did there. Huh. So you, I can tell you've been doing the drills, but we've got to learn to relax and do it. And you're trying to wrench this shoulder blade back too aggressively. Uh -huh. So put your arms across your chest. And yeah. Forget golf for a second. Yeah. I don't want you to think about anything golf. Really. I don't want you to just turn. Yeah. Relax your shoulders. Just turn from here. So you're trying to still move your shoulders. And anytime you start activating your shoulders by protracting this left shoulder blade, pushing across your chest, trying to rip this one back too aggressively, uh -huh. you're gonna make your swing too armsy. Now, see your arms, do this one, put your hands like this. Uh -huh. Okay, put them right up against your chest, turn again. There you go. See how your shoulder stays back now. There you go. Now you've made a great big turn in your hands have stayed right in front of the center of your chest and your shoulders don't move at all, right? There you go. Good, way better. Huh. That's an interesting feeling. So this drill, is in, and this is a perfect drill for you. It's called on the website. Oh, jeez! Uh, hurricane. The hurricane is not letting up here. Uh, five minutes of perfect rotation, and we start out with this drill to get you the feeling of how to rotate your rib cage without your hips doing all the work and your shoulders pushing and arms pushing all over the place. And my hips overturning. A little bit. So keep them anchored in a little bit more. Don't. Keep this knee here and this knee pointing at an imaginary ball there. There you go. No, I don't feel like I'm turning my shoulders all the way. You're yeah. not. So you yeah. turn as far as you can, Yeah. but then to let it, to finish your turn, your hips are gonna have to join in, right? So that's when you start to let them turn a little bit. Make sure you stay nice and relaxed. Just turn back. I don't feel nice and relaxed. <laughs> you don't look nice and relaxed. Look, you're trying too hard. There you go. Good. Much better. It's funny. Stop I've... there. Yeah. Say so your hand moved off your zipper a little bit. Uh -huh. It doesn't seem like a lot, and it's not right now. But the problem is it becomes a lot when your hands are out here, and that little tiny inch of movement up here becomes six inches down here. There you go. That's why we start like this. 
you're doing really well with it. And now take your hands off your chest a few inches and do the same drill, but when you finish, I still want to see them right in front of your zipper. There you go, excellent. Okay, your hips are turning too much. So feel upper body rotation. We're close. Let's do one drill for me. Come over here to the golf cart for a second. Okay. This is, uh, this is on the website as well. It's just called the chair drill. I'm just sitting in a chair doing it. But this gets you the same thing you can do on the golf course. Now your hips can't move at all. But more importantly, you start to feel your obliques start to activate because these are the I only muscles. Definitely can, yeah. Right, so that was missing because you would just let your hips kind of take over for you. We mm -hmm. call that the lazy man's turn. That's, that's, that's how me. you just <laughs> let the hips fire back and then all of a sudden you don't get any coil there. Relax the shoulders. You see, I'm trying to get the shoulder back further. No, no, I can't do, do it here. Yeah. Forget about turning from here. Mm -hmm. It's from here. Yeah. So your shoulders just leave them there. You're just going to turn. It's going to feel like kind of from your belly. It's really from your core, for your obliques here. Relax your shoulders. Yeah. yeah we're, so as you start translating the feeling from taking tension out of here and putting tension into here, then we're getting into the right spots. And now you can see, you can make a nice big 45 degree turn without your hips moving at all. So as you get into your golf posture in a second, we're gonna try and feel the same thing. We wanna be able to make that 45 degree turn without our hips really moving much at all. Mm -hmm. So can you feel those muscles waking up now? I, I feel it through back here and a little bit up through here. Okay, good. Not the belly button. Well, maybe well, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, technically, your belly button's mm -hmm. not. I mean, those the abdominal muscles are more to hold your guts in than anything else. But good. There we go. Now let's try that in your golf posture back. Ah, watch your hips. So your goal is for it to feel just like it did when you were sitting on the chair, right? You want to feel these same muscles activating. And then let yourself finish your turn. And as you shift over your weight to your right, that's what allows you to make the full turn. Mm. Relax as you do this. If you add a little bit of pace to this, so go ahead and rotate quicker, you'll take out a lot of this tension. A lot of times, you've got to do things slowly, but a lot of times we do them so with so much tension when we do them slow, that we can't get out of our own way. Get those hips anchored in there. There you go. And then as you get there, shift over to finish your shift to the right and finish your turn. Huh. There you go. Lower body. See how much more quiet your lower body looks now? Uh -huh. Make sure you shift, get your weight over to the right, finish your turn. So your goal when you finish is this right shoulder blade on this side of your head. There you go. Yep, right there. Wow. That's a full turn. Ooh. Where's your weight? Uh, it's, it, it gets out on the right foot, and it's all—it's from front to back, not just on the heel. I've been trying to put the weight in my heel. It, it needs to be kind of in the middle of your foot, back to your ankle, but you don't want to be so far up that your toes are lifting off the ground. Relax. Go a little quicker. There you go. Good. Better. Relax. close there. Okay, stop right there. When you're turning, you have a tendency to not let yourself fully shift to the right, yeah. and then you start to reverse pivot a little bit. Your hips start to reverse hip shift. Uh -huh. So as you're going back, I want you... <coughs> so go ahead and set up again. Mm -hmm. Get axis tilt. All right. So your hip should never move off this shaft the entire swing. Ah, look where it is. Where did it end up? Oh, it has moved back. Can't quite clearly see it now. Ah, you're moving away from it, right at the top. Huh. Isn't that interesting? No, no, stop, stop.
So when you're doing this, once I put that shaft there during the t first part of the takeaway, you started trying to move into it. Uh -huh. You're not going to try and move the shaft away, and you're not going to try and move away from it. It's going to stay right there. So as you go back, your hip just looks like it stays in the exact same spot. Now it's uh -huh. moving diagonally. But from your perspective in the mirror, I want you to look like it stays on the shaft all the way to the top of the swing. Okay. Turn, 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 turn your upper body. Shift over, back, shift over to your right. That's your right. There you go. Wow. Huh. So you have a tendency. Now my weight feels like it's more evenly distributed left to right on my right foot as opposed to being on, on the inside of my right foot. Yeah, you weren't letting yourself get all the way over. That's Think of like a, if you're going to yeah. throw a ball, yeah. right? You're going to load up all your weight on that foot and then go. Because right. that's what's going to allow you to coil and pivot. So when you're in your golf swing, it has a lot of the same similarities. You're going back. You want to be loaded up on this right leg where uh -huh. you can almost pick this left foot up. Uh -huh. Most tour pros are about 70 to 85% on the right side at the, at the peak, uh -huh. you know, right before they finish the back swing. I'm about 85%. You were probably 60%. Uh -huh. So you need more weight to shift onto this right glute to activate that glute and get it woken up so you have more power there available to help you in the downswing, but also to make a powerful turn against. If you're just kind of soft with the lower body, your upper body can't put any coil against it. So the resistance of the two is what helps provide some of this Good. muscle load, right? But now the, when you get the weight over the right foot, it's not just along the inside. No, it's no, no. Of, it's, it's, it's on the whole foot. Middle of the foot, absolutely, yeah, yeah uh, oh, for sure. Okay. You start on the inside a little yeah. bit, not a ton. I think partly that's the reason I weight on the inside of my foot kind of like pushes this hip. Gotcha, yeah. The other way. Let it, it's not, it wouldn't be natural to try and keep it on the inside the whole time. See, I, I've been doing that, so I think that's one of the factors. Okay. So let your weight go all the way back and get fully loaded. Just like, again, mm. feel athletic with it. Mm. But it wouldn't feel athletic to be right. on the inside of your foot. It wouldn't yeah. make any sense, right? So that's what I want you to feel is as you get fully loaded in that. Don't be afraid to let your weight and that glute really activate going back. Let's try it again. Okay, I'm going to hit a hip a little bit. Wow. Squat down into this right knee. So yeah. There you go. You feel this glute yeah. activate? Wow, yeah. Okay. So this is a huge piece that's missing out of your swing. Wow, what a different feeling that is. You feel a lot more powerful doing this, I assume. Yes. I feel, uh, it's just amazing how I feel the weight on, on my entire foot as opposed to just the edge. Good. Good. Load into that right leg. Good. And as you go to the top, just if you squat just a little bit to really help reinforce that feeling of activating that glute and leg and hamstring. It's a good little exercise just to remind you. Just a little bit, just slip a little bit. Shoot my shirt there. So do it again. Good, right there's perfect. Good, there you go. Really good, much better. Wow, yeah. yeah. Feels awake now, right? Yeah. I, I feel I feel the weight on my right foot. Yes. Good. Yeah. All right. So that's the start. When um, when I set up like this, I have the weight on the inside of both feet. Just but a little bit. Should it be bit. more? Just a little bit. It should be more balanced. It's very little. I mean, it's still you know inside to the middle of your foot. Good. Now from there, we got to get back down. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we're going to do once we load up going back is what? What are we going to do coming back? Shift the weight. Shift the weight. Number one thing, right? If we get that weight shift happening correctly, then the arms, the club, the shoulders, and all this stuff falls right. in line. So yeah. this is the next most important piece. But to do that, we've got to make sure that these muscles are activated as we go back. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to use, this left side of our body and our core, to help shift our weight and post up. So when we go back, I want you to start to feel some stretching in this side of your body, which is why I didn't want your hips to over-rotate from mm -hmm. the back. So I may grab your leg and hold you in place. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so back in front of the mirror. Yeah. Turn, 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 turn. There you go. Now, I want you to feel some stretching here. If you don't, let me know. I don't feel a lot. Not a lot. Then we need to anchor this back a little more so you may be okay, more Now I feel more. There you go. 
So feel the difference. Let your hips turn, yeah. and this nothing, goes away. Nothing, yeah. This small little difference wow. is yeah. huge. Yeah. These muscles are what initiate the whole transition. They initiate the whole uh. important part of the golf swing. So uh -huh. if you don't load those going back, and you don't have that awareness that this stuff isn't doing anything, then you've got no chance. You uh. have to use your arms. So that's what you're going to be focusing on, is do you feel a stretch and load over here? Because now it's going to be instinctual to help you use this to shift back to the left and post it. I don't turn your shoulders. Uh -huh. Never turn your shoulders. Shift. Turn your hips and obliques. Turn this out of the way. Straighten your left knee. Straighten your left knee. All the way. Straight. There you go. Relax your shoulders. Now, look down at the ground. Yeah. Your shoulders are back. Your shoulders are now square and your hips are slightly open. Yes. This is what you're trying to achieve uh -huh. in the downswing. Uh -huh. That your hips lead everything to get open first, mm -hmm. and then we worry about all the other stuff. Uh -huh. So that's the only thing you gotta do. So when you get into impact, each time, I want your shoulders square, you know, parallel to your feet, and your hips slightly open. And 90, 80, 90% of your weight on the left leg. Good. Push that left hip out of the way by straightening that leg. Wow. Stay yeah. flat on the foot. Uh -huh. Relax your shoulders. They're a little, there you go. Better. Uh -huh. Again. There you go. Look at your chest. Where's your chest pointing? Yeah, it doesn't point out there. No. Again. Chest pointing. How did it get there? Shoulders are in. That's right. You yeah. moved them, right? Yeah. So you don't move your shoulders. So go uh -huh. to the top again. I'm going to help you feel this. That's part of my over the top swing. Yeah. Well, it's what <laughs> I've worked on it for your, years. <laughs> exactly. You've mastered it. It's it's textbook perfect classic over the top. Okay. Now I'm going to help hold your shoulders, and you focus on moving your core and your legs. Get your hip out of the way. You gotta open your hips, straighten that left leg, flat on the foot, and you're done. So uh -huh. Now your chest is square, uh -huh. your hips are open. What did wow. you do with your chest? It's going this way. What did you do with it? Uh, I didn't move it. Exactly, you did yeah. nothing, right? Yeah. Your chest and your rib cage gets moved by your legs. Oh, boy, is that a different feeling? It's gonna be very different for you, yeah. right? The, the, the big thing so far to me is how much, how different my right foot feels. Really? When I put my, because I'm always, I have always been like, uh, and, and uh, now all of a sudden I feel like I can keep that hip in the proper place. Good. I have been working on kind of the weight on the inside and sliding my hips back. Like oh, that. no, no. Yeah. Don't want to do that. Yeah. Every single time that left leg has to be straight. I never straighten my left leg. Yeah, left most leg golfers is. kind of do what you do and they're kind of soft with their left knee yeah. and then their hips can't ever get out of the way and they can't use the ground for any leverage. So let's see if you're soft with your left knee and your hips can't get out of the way, they can't really turn. Well, they're going to just do this. You're going to tend to move outside of yeah. neutral, which is a great way uh -huh. to tear a labrum in your left hip and your knee and your hip and all kinds of issues. So. What you want to do is each time just concentrate at before the club and the hands ever get to impact, that left leg is straightened up. Not hyperextended locked out, but straight. Sorry. Relax those shoulders, good. Just keep your shoulders back and focus just on your legs and your core, clearing out of the way and straightening that left leg. Good. There you go. Again. Relax them when I say, when I say relax them. They're elevated. Relax. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm, yeah. okay, shrug your shoulders up and depress them. There you go. That's where your shoulders are. Wow, I'm really good at this. Yeah, you're very very tense. Uh, when I'm getting into the straight left foot, 
do I feel like the weight is on the inside of my right foot at this point? It will go, you only got like 10 or 20 percent, so you yeah. shouldn't really feel much of anything. shoulders oh yeah. yeah open up your hips a little bit more as you get into impact keep coming you got to shift over more shift. now don't push off the right Just uh -huh. relax that right leg there you go. And use the left side straighten that left leg up push the hip back this way there you go, good. See how you can open your hips now? Not your shoulders, your hips. There you go. Yep, just keep doing that move right there. I want you to feel wow. this activate. Keep doing I've it. I've never done that in my life <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> wow. It's a different feeling for most golfers who are all uh -huh. upper body, upper torso dominant. Uh -huh. Keep doing it. You feel how your leg is moving your everything in the swing now. There you go. Not your shoulders. There you go, open up your hips. There you go, good, again. Good. Now open your hips. There you go, so try to get your belt buckle pointing at the, the golf bag over here, basically. Not quite, yeah, that's perfect, right there. There you go, good. You feel those muscles working now that you're probably not used to. They're all across my back. Your back, your glutes, your obliques, all of this stuff is what's powering the swing. It's your core from here to here that's going to do it. There you go. Relax. There you go. So now let's try to put them together. Back swing and down swing. Mm -hmm. There you go. Shoulders are a lot more square there. Hips are open. That's good. Again. Relax. Where's your chest pointing? See if we can be assertive with it on this next one. I want you to really try and push that foot into the ground like you're trying to smash my fingers under your okay. foot. There you go. Aha! I like it. Legs are waking up. Smash my fingers. There you go. Just turn the shoulders a little bit there. A little bit, yep. Yeah. I'm shrugging my shoulders too. I yeah, you really I didn't carry realize I do that. Attention your traps. I do, yeah. So anytime that you're not sure if you're getting you know, out of disconnected from your core, whether it's at the top of your back swing or at impact, let's so say we're just coming into impact <coughs> and you're not sure, shrug your shoulders up as high as you can and then depress them down and you'll feel right away like how much more lengthening yes. you get in here. You, uh -huh. won't, you just won't recognize because you've been doing this for so long. Uh -huh how tight and elevated your shoulders are. Right. And as we start building real power into your swing, you're gonna want those shoulders to be depressed. Otherwise, you're gonna have your arms totally independent from your core. So all this great work to get speed and power from your legs is gonna be disconnected. You're not gonna be able to connect the two because your core is gonna move really fast, but your arms are gonna be moving independent uh -huh. all over the place. That's why your uh -huh. shoulder blades have to stay down and connected. Wow. When your shoulder blades elevate, imagine boxing, right? Nobody's gonna knock anybody out with a shoulder like this, right? Huh. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But you put your shoulder down, now as I rotate and pivot into you, that's how I'm going to drive power from my legs and my core. Uh -huh. So if I punch you, I'm going to use my legs, and, and you're trying to do it you know, like this with your shoulder yeah. by your head. Just, all you can use is your arm musculature alone. There's no power there. And I, I shrug my shoulders, I presume, because of the tension in my body. And I'm just you're, tr it. 
it's tension, but you're also trying to move from up here. Uh -huh. And I'm trying to disassociate everything from here up and I'm trying to get you to move from here down. Uh -huh. The whole golf swing happens from the top of your abs to the middle of your thighs, basically. Mm -hmm. you think about what's going on here, then that's usually the golden egg mm -hmm. that, that people are missing. Mm -hmm. Everything from here up, it's just being told what to do by this. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, like when you're doing this drill, and sometimes, honestly, this drill makes it a little challenging because we start pushing against our hands and we start creating tension right away. So that's why I like to put my arms across my chest mm -hmm. and put my shoulders down. And now I'm kind of like in a straight jacket, mm -hmm. right? So now my arms can't move. So now I really have to just focus on what's happening from here to here. Mm -hmm. So if you find that you can't get rid of this tension, just put your arms back across your chest. It doesn't matter. This is just letting you know whether or not you're pushing, right? So try it a couple of times. Excuse me, with your arm across your, or yeah, arms across. Across, I yep. guess. Mm -hmm. And then just shrug. Shrug your shoulders up to your ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feel oh, much wow. more. That's, that's just I neutral. start off like this. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So now just keep your shoulders relaxed. And let's rotate from here like we've been working on. There you go. And now use your legs. Bring you back. Straighten that left leg. Straighten left leg. Good. Shrug and depress. Ah, oh, see wow. the difference? Yeah. So now remember, you're still trying to punch me like this. Yeah. Every time your shoulders elevate, this scapula, every time it moves up just a little bit, you're gonna feel this lat disengage. And this lat is important for connecting to the muscles that you're gonna use to create rotation. In the uh, setup position is, um, sorry to get stuck on this right foot, but is the weight across the right, not on the inside edge, even at the it's setup? Barely on the inside, but still okay. just try to be athletic with it. There's no special formula. The only thing that really matters here is that you're not on the outside of the right foot. Yeah, okay, I'm not anywhere near the right Yeah, then don't worry about that. Look at your shoulders. Shoulders are elevated and open. Look at your chest. When you come into impact, I want you to feel that your shoulders are level to the ground mm -hmm. when you're doing this drill. When you come in right now, you want to do this. You tilt and get this left shoulder way higher than the right mm -hmm. and get them open. When you do this drill, they should be almost basically level, parallel to the ground, not tilted like this. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Uh huh. Getting the shoulders like that is part of my straightening out my left foot. Well, uh. you're moving your shoulders to create them in that, to get them to that position. If you move just your core and your legs, go ahead. No, don't move your shoulders at all. Move your legs. Now look at your shoulders in the mirror. Uh, they're, they're basically low, parallel to the ground, right? Uh -huh. The only way that they would not end up here is if you move them. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of part, that's how I shift my, how I have been trying to shift my weight is to move my shoulders up like that and f put my weight. <laughs> now you uh, shift your weight by moving your hips, right? Ah, uh, this is going to be a different feeling. <laughs> Did much better keeping your shoulders relaxed. Oops, there it goes. You oh. felt it though, right? Yeah, I did. No, no. Well, I saw it too. Okay, now I want to uh, relax the shoulders. Good. Yeah. Shift over. Relax. Here's a simple check. Hold this across your yeah. chest, and when you finish. That shaft and that shaft should be matching each other, just be parallel to each other. Just like they are right now. Lower body, shift to me. Shift, post up, you're done. Look, perfect. Mm -hmm. They're parallel to each other. Shoulders are nice and level. There you go. You've kept them relaxed. Your hips are open, shoulders are square. It's the whole golf swing. You look wow. at any tour pro, they all look like this at impact. At least a really good ball striker. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Perfect. Now you got that shaft to check every time. You can see that that shaft shouldn't be tilted like this. 
and it shouldn't be open in relationship to that one. Wow. There's a simple little drill for you. To yeah, it, it just feels like uh, now I'm moving this part of my body from the knee and not my shoulders. Perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. There was a great book written in the 60s uh -huh. called The Search for the Perfect Offspring, written by a group of UK re researchers and golf nuts. And they tried to quantify everything in the swing. It was super, super cool. Was, they were way ahead of their time. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they wanted to quantify was how much muscle mass was required to generate enough horsepower to produce a reasonable you know, 100 plus mile an hour of it, which most amateurs can't dream of doing, right? right. You're probably in the 80s at the right. time, yep. I guess, right? So to get over 100, the century mark is like a huge deal for most people. Mm -hmm. But it's something you can do like this when you understand the sheer mechanics of it. It takes about 32 pounds of muscle to generate enough horsepower to swing the golf club that fast. Uh -huh. Now, if you're a bodybuilder, you might have 32 pounds of muscle in your shoulders and your chest and all the stuff, right, that can create speed. But most of us aren't bodybuilders that yeah. play golf, right? So where do we recruit that much muscle fiber? Well, your glutes, the chunkiest muscle in your body, incredible muscle density. Your hamstrings, your quads, your core, your lat, your back, all of these muscles are where all the power is stored. Mm -hmm. And so the reason a Tour Pro looks efficient is one, because using your core, and two, because we're using leverage. Mm -hmm. Most amateurs do the exact opposite. They mm -hmm. try to swing only from the, the chest up, and it's all arms and hands. They don't have nearly enough muscle mass, and that's why every single amateur can't swing faster than 92 miles an hour with the driver. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost ridiculous how consistent it is yeah. that everybody hits a wall at 92. Yeah. But there's math involved here. Yeah. It's simple horsepower. You, uh -huh. either could, you either have enough muscle fiber there and you can put enough stuff together to make that club move quickly, or you can't. Uh -huh. And the great thing about doing what you're doing is it's way less effort. You've got, you're recruiting way more muscle fiber. So instead of trying to do a squat with one leg, you're gonna do mm -hmm. it with both. Mm -hmm. There's way more muscle there. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm trying to get you to feel is all of this core activation and these big muscle movements are what allow you to create lag as a byproduct. So now you have leverage in your swing, but you don't try and create that. Mm -hmm. But doing the stuff that you're doing, you'll, all, you'll never ever change those things until you change your whole thesis statement of the golf mm -hmm. swing, which is move everything from the inside out. Mm -hmm. When the body moves correctly, the club will move. Is all the tension that I'm putting in my shoulders part of the reason that I swing over the top? It's exactly why you swing over the top. You can't not swing over the top when you fire the right arm and have a really upright spine. Uh -huh. Your spine angle is one of the primary dictators of swing plane. If your spine angle is upright, your swing plane is going to tend to be steep. Now, to exaggerate that, let's say that my spine angle is 90 degrees yeah. to the ground this way. Well, how would I swing over the top? Yeah. I physically couldn't. I would swing away from the inside. Uh -huh. So the angle that you create, that you set up at address, which is why I always harp on axis tilt, tilt, right? Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Because I don't want to, let's not preset ourselves to reverse pivot and swing over the top. Uh -huh. It's going to change the swing plane. So when I get a little bit of axis tilt, swing plane is automatically starting out, at least on the right foot. Mm -hmm. So. The reason, and then from there, even if you had great access to, or even if you were like this, and you still try to pick your right arm up because that's the only thing you have for power, because you don't, you didn't activate any of this. You, the only thing the right arm can do is do what? Well, you've got three angles in your right arm in the back swing. You've got your arms elevated, your arms folded, and your wrist is set. Yeah. You loaded up all three of these in the back swing. Yeah. So what direction can they move in the down swing? They can only go out, yeah. which is the casting motion. Right. So you're telling yourself, get this guy loaded up, and then the only thing I can do is cast the club, yeah. which is why we add this last. It adds speed, but only late in the swing. Mm -hmm. So when you're learning to do this, you'll stop caring about all of this stuff, which is why, again, I keep, keep telling you to relax and put your shoulders down, put your shoulders down, because you, if there's tension there, those muscles are gonna fire. Uh, you just, what you just said reminded me of a comment you made at one of the videos which said there's a tremendous amount of speed from here to here. Yeah, just they three feet. speed, yeah. It's only three feet. The average Tour Pro goes from, I think it's 22 miles an hour, three feet away from the ball with a six iron, to 92 miles an That's hour in three feet. Incredible, yeah. But it's leverage. Yeah. There's nothing else that you can do other than to release your wrist that can quadruple 
the speed. Leverage is a force multiplier. That's what it does. Uh -huh. That's why we can lift up a car with a tiny little jack, because we have leverage, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're doing this and you're firing from the top with your arm and you lose all your leverage, you need to try and rotate or do something to try and help you. Mm -hmm. But when you do this correctly, you're going to have all the leverage in the world and know how to use it. But we've got to get your body working first correctly or it's all a yeah. different point. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yes, it does right. make sense. So let's keep rotating and then we're going to slowly start adding the arm back in there and get everything back where we need it. Let's uh, just tell me if we're doing the first part correctly in the sense that okay. I'm uh, keeping this hip lined up and I'm sure. putting the weight onto my... Do it one more time. So I would go ahead and set up for me one more time. Okay. Just make sure as you go back, it's okay for your head to move a little bit off the ball. So when you make a mistake, it's very, very slight, very subtle. But as you do it, you lose a little bit of axis tilt, a little too much axis tilt because the hip's moving a little bit this way, which it needs to. It'll look like it's staying in the same spot. But if you try and keep your head perfectly centered while you're doing this, it'll fall back the other way. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to let your head move slightly. Like this. Just a, yeah. not turning, just moving a little bit off the ball. So go ahead and do it again. I'll hold my hand here where you started. Yeah. Perfect. So now you'll have a little bit more axis tilt away from the target which you need, because again, this is going to affect swing plane. Now, can I feel like I'm starting to push up on this left foot? You no, know, you need to shift first. You need to shift first. Yeah, you got to come laterally, and then, and then push, push up. up. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm still missing that. Lateral, good. Post up. Awesome. Love it. Relax that shoulder. You want to see how high it was? Yeah. So you got a few checkpoints and you always hold your follow through or your finish position and then go through your checkpoints. So let's do it on this one. Okay, so stay right there and I'm gonna go through all your checkpoints mm -hmm. from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Number one, flat footed. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want you to be out to the outside. Right. No power there. Flat footed, mm -hmm. we're gonna work up from there. Knee is straight, mm -hmm. hips are open, mm -hmm. shoulders are square and depressed. Perfect. Those are your checkpoints. So every single swing that you make, every drill, you go through those same checkpoints here. Wow, yeah. Huh. Okay. Let's see if I can do that. Excellent. Much, much better. Really good. Relax that left shoulder. Look at it. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It, it's up too. It's yeah. up higher. Okay. But that's wow. why you go through your checkpoints. You stop on every single rep, yeah. every single one, and go through your checkpoints. If you don't go through your checkpoints, you have no idea if you're doing it right. Because you, you've got five things you got to check here. Right. See, so you know, at first it's going to be like, okay, I literally have to think to myself, my foot, my knee, you know, whatever. But eventually it'll be like, uh, okay, this stuff I know is all working correctly, mm -hmm. but now I only have to watch out for my shoulders. Mm -hmm. right? I only have to watch out for my left knee. Go through, walk me through your checkpoints. Okay, uh, my weight is on the outside of my left foot, not really, as, that's probably as balanced as it should be. Okay. My hips are turned, I believe. The so claws are still, it's not quite straight. Yeah, go straight. Yeah, there it's better. And the club is reasonably parallel. And my head is, what should be Good, yeah. there we go. Good, so you caught it. This is why you go through your checkpoints. No point in doing the reps wrong. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good. Good. 
Yeah. Go through your checkpoints. Okay. I think I was a little turning yeah. a little bit too much there. Uh, my weight, my right foot is on my toe, inside toe. Okay, so you want that right foot to be on the ground. Yeah, it's really, I feel like it's right up. Yeah, you never want that heel coming up off the uh -huh. ground at this point. And if it uh -huh. does, it means you're pushing off them, right? Yeah. So when you shift laterally, the foot will want to roll slightly to the inside where the outside yeah. becomes a little light. Huh. But that's it. Okay. But this heel stays down. Relax, relax. Oops. Oops. Okay. Yeah. It's okay to make mistakes, yeah. but you, if you recognize them and yeah. you correct them, right? That's all that matters. So it's okay. this is really normal for this to want to come up because people really push off the right side. I notice when I'm playing golf too that um, I think that is associated with my coming over the top and pulling the ball to the left. I feel like I just can't. They're, they're all kind of tied together. I won't go into all the reasons for why, but, but they are related. Checkpoints? Oh, my weight's still on my right. Okay, I feel like my knee is not quite not straight. straight. Exactly. And, uh... My shoulders are still a little shrugged, and the weight is way up, still way up on my okay. right foot. Now, it, it does technically move yeah. to the ball of the foot oh, in yeah, the down so don't get too caught up on where it is. Yeah. What I'm mostly concerned with that right foot at this point is that there's not a lot of weight on it, yeah. and the heel is down. Yeah. If that's happening, then we're golden. Okay. I, I still don't feel that when I start the weight shift, I put enough weight onto the left foot. Okay. Well, let's correct it this time. Relax, relax, relax. There you go. That was a good shift. Now, uh, now I feel like there's weight on that. Yeah, now you can push it into the ground a lot, a lot easier, a lot more aggressively when there's more weight over there. Because when you put more weight over there, you recruit more muscle fiber. This feels better to me now. Good, it looks better. I feel like the weight is better on my right foot. Look my how much flatter this is. Yeah. And this is straight, right? Yeah, it's straight. And, uh, I think the club is still parallel. Yep. And the shoulders are a little better. Yeah, it's all better. Way better. Relax that right leg. Just relax. Move it. Relax. There you go. This is the one doing all the heavy lifting. Rather pushing him off on the right. Correct. I liked when you did that little kind of sit into that left side. You put a lot of weight. There you go. You see what you did there? Without even thinking about it, you recruited double the amount of muscle fiber because you put load onto it. If you're just kind of gently doing this, you're going to feel no activation mm -hmm. in the glute. But if you feel like you're really stomping on it, that's what creates muscle fiber uh -huh. and that's what allows you to create some spring to get some pump into it and use your legs but if you're just kind of doing this mm -hmm. there's nothing there it's mm -hmm. like if you're going to jump it's more you get i think it's like 12 something percent more power when you jump when you start from a standing point and then squat and go versus just starting like this and trying to jump from here mm -hmm. so you need to take advantage of that stretch shortening cycle and you did that by kind of moving into it and then quickly moving mm -hmm. out of it. That's mm -hmm. where you get free power. It's a mm -hmm. ton of free power. Mm -hmm. And you, as you learn to do this, I want you to start trying to add a little bit more pace to the whole drill. As long as you don't screw it up, I want to keep going faster and faster. One of the things that's happening right now is that my mind is dictating the speed. I'm thinking, do this, do, yeah. do that next, do that. And that needs and, to happen at yeah. the start because yeah. you've got to make sure you do the movements right. But now we're doing them pretty, pretty good. We slowly start adding a little more pace to them and honestly, some of these things will be a little bit easier when you add pace to them. Turn looks really good. Stop. Whoops, shoulder was up. Damn. Yeah, check the shoulders. Yeah. Uh, I gotta work on the shoulders this time. See if okay. I can. Relax that left shoulder. 
Hmm. My shoulder's not up because I'm going like this. It's because I'm going like that. Yeah, you're no longer tilting like you were. Yeah. You're not trying to do this, but your shoulders are still shoulders. elevated. So again, you just do shrug and depress to get rid of that. There you go. Good check on the left shoulder that time. Good. Right heel. Yep, on the ground. Yeah. There you go. Straighten that left knee. There. So Got to go through the checkpoints still. Okay, uh, my leg is straight. Yeah. Weight's on the outside of my left foot. Okay, Pump try to get the, parallel. Try to get not to the outside, but more to the center. More to the center, okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay, and the club is straight and the shoulders are more relaxed. Much better. There we go. A little bit of a hip. Axis tilt. Relax your shoulders going back. Yeah. Nice little squat move there to the left side. It was perfect. Really good. You just made this little tiny like load into that no, leg. Just a little increase in the knee flex and it gives you that little extra spring to get going the other way. Really good. New feeling. Yeah, it's all everything's gonna be new for you today. I promise you. Take a breather, well, I'm shake it I'm loosening the shoulders. <laughs> Oops. Wow. That shoulder shrug is, is built into my weight shift. I saw that. Yeah. It, it's actually happening during the back swing. Yeah. That's what's creating the initial tension. And you've caught yourself a couple times. But what happens is you start trying to protract the shoulder. You're trying yes. to push your shoulder back and that moves it out and up. Uh -huh. And then as that happens, as you start down, you create all this tension in your trap and it wants to elevate. Mm. So as you're going back is where you actually need to check it. Uh -huh. When you're going back, you want to make sure that your left shoulder is down. You want to create some space. I can't get my left shoulder under my chin because my neck's fused. But yeah. if, you, if your neck's not fused, it'll go under there. But you don't want it to be ramming into your chin. Uh -huh. It needs to go under, it needs to stay depressed as you go back. First time I've ever thought about my shoulders. Really? My golf swing. In terms of, you know, being shrugged or unshrugged. Interesting. I've, th I've thought about them in terms of, you know, turning. Sure. Yeah, the video on the side I think is called connecting your core or something like that, getting in the box. We're talking about this one. Yeah, you see the difference there? Yeah. Now, if there's all this tension has gone during the back swing, then you can focus on your lower body. Shift over. Good. Start getting your hips out of the way and post them up. Now look at your shoulders in the mirror. Mm. They look just nice and chilled yeah, out, right? Uh, yeah. But it happened right during the takeaway. When you start pushing during the takeaway, that scapula starts moving forward and up. So you just got to keep them down. Relax. There you go. Way better. Nice. Relax that shoulder, relax the shoulder. Wow. Closer. Mm. Again. Yeah. I'm amazed how ingrained that is. <laughs> Lower body. Much better. Good progress there. How's the club is not? It's parallel. Yeah. Yeah, it's this line, but it's like this. It's not like that. Well, that's I mean, okay. Right? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Just hold it across like the center of your chest, and it's, it's technically you should have secondary tilt, right? Your spine mm. is going to be leaned away from yeah. the target, so technically this should, should be, be a little. Bit. It depends on where you start with it, yeah. you know. So yeah, if it's 90 degrees to your spine, it's going to be pointing up a little bit at the start. Relax. Good. Good shift there. Smash that foot in the ground by straightening that knee. Yeah, that's straight. When I, when I say straight, again, 
again, it's not like hyper extended, but it's how you'd be standing and talking. Right? It's 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 straight, right? Mm -hmm. If you even just take a little bit, 20 degrees of flexion out, that alone will allow your hips to keep sliding. This move forces your hips to stop moving laterally and starts moving them rotationally out of the way. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's the post-up move, right? You want to imagine this is like a big old oak tree at impact. Mm -hmm. But if you're soft with your knee, everything can kind of keep moving and sliding all over the place, which makes your pelvis move. And whatever happens down here is going to affect the golf club. You know, for a long time, I associated weight shift with moving your left hip up like this. Well, it does so move that way, but into neutral. Uh -huh. It never goes past your foot unless you want to tear your label. shoulder shrug that time too. He did. Left knee didn't get straight there again either. Oops. Wow. Relax the shoulder. So stop right there. I'm going to show you what's going on here. Look how far your elbow is back from where it started. Mm -hmm. How did I get there? When you start, your arms are way more here, but as you go back, you start moving your arms across your chest, and that's what's causing your shoulder to elevate. So start here. Now keep your elbows right here as you go back. Don't pull it like that. Well, they're going like oh. this. Oh, okay. So just keep them here. Go ahead and set it. Go ahead and go back. Just rotate the ribcage. Don't move the club or arms or anything. They're all going to stay right there. There you go. Now come back. My shoulders are level. Yeah, exactly. So all I did there is I made sure this H that was underneath the seashell in your shirt uh -huh. stayed there. Uh -huh. But what you were doing before is you'd move your arms across your chest, and this H would end up over here, and your arms are way out here, and that's going to move this up. So I just kind of made it stay right there, anchored against your chest, so your arms couldn't move. I actually moved my arm like that. Exactly. That's what uh -huh. you were doing. So now I just keep it anchored in there so it can't move, so your arms aren't going to move. under the A is moved yeah. an inch. Yeah. Right? And that's not a lot, but it was moving like four inches before because your uh -huh. arms were doing this. Uh -huh. And that's why your shoulder like has to move, right? Yeah. It allows that movement to happen. Your shoulder has to come across your chest. Uh -huh. I wonder so, which came first, the shoulder going up and pulling it or the arms pushing it up? Uh, well, it's the, it's the left arm pushing across your body that uh -huh. you're doing. It's causing it. But if you just hold that against the chest and don't let it move, your shoulders can't go anywhere. I mean, technically, they can go up, but it shouldn't move at all. Stop right there. Yeah, there you go. Hold this anchored in against your chest so it can't move. There you go. Now come down. Go a little bit over because you opened your shoulders, but this stayed a lot more down. Uh -huh. You just turned a little bit that time. Otherwise, it was good. Way better with your shoulders. Look how much lower that left shoulder is now. Uh -huh. Finally got a lot of that tension out of there, right? Uh -huh. Way better. Can I shrug my shoulder without moving my hands? Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Good. Just straighten that left knee. There you go. Good with the shoulders there, much better. Shoulders are a little open, but otherwise good. I want to get a little more resistance and activation in this left side when you start the back swing because you're letting your hips turn a little bit too much right away. Uh -huh. Part of this is because when you're going really slow, it's kind of hard to coordinate everything. Uh -huh. So I want you to try and feel your upper body is going to rotate back a little quicker, and I'm going to hold this in place for, for a second. Okay. There, you, that's what I was looking for. Good, way better. Now come down. Perfect. 
way better. Again, that left leg all the way straight on this one. Go quicker, going back. Good. Come through. Straighten that left leg. Ah, uh, don't. No, no, no. Uh -huh, oops. Yeah, no, none of this. That's yeah. death. Yeah. Unless you want to swing over the top. That right shoulder, the last thing you'd ever do with it is move it toward the ball. Right. As you go go back to the top of your swing, flip this club around for me for a second so it grips on the other side. Perfect. Go to the top. All the way back. All right, now come down. Uh-huh. Get your hips going, they're not done. Straighten that left knee. Now I'm just holding your right shoulder back. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, you never want it to go that way. Oh, That's wow. always going to create over the top. In the yeah. huh. So just imagine I'm holding that, that grip back there. Relax. Huh. Relax. Your legs. Post up on that left side. Let's see if we can get the downswing, that shift back to the left and the post up a little faster. Okay. Straighten the left leg. Oh, I felt it come forward too. You did, you pushed off your right side. That's yeah. why your heel was up in the air. That's why you go, go through your checkpoints on every single drill. A little pace. I feel like I keep my shoulders back. I need to keep my shoulders yeah. back. Right? <clears throat> go through checkpoints. There shoulders you go. Good. Up. Everything else is pretty good. You're doing yeah. it twice as fast. Let's see if we can add more pace to it. Keep going. Wow. Look at this built in up shoulder. There's a lot of shoulder activation. Yeah, all right. Straighten that left knee. Every single time it's got to be straight. If it's not straight, you're losing power. Stomp that foot in the ground. Push that left foot in the ground. Straight, straight, straight. You think you're doing it, you really aren't. Shift, post up, straighten the leg, relax the right leg, straighten the left leg all the way up. There. Good. Good. A little more pace. It's good, really good. Really nice. Again, a little faster. Watch that left shoulder. Pretty good there. Nice. All right, so this drill is your baby for a little bit. Yeah. But I'm gonna walk you through kind of the whole sequence of things. Yeah. So when you go home to practice, you kind of know how to stack the next piece on and then stack that next piece on, next piece on. I don't expect you to be able to do them perfect on right. I want you to see the whole picture so that you know like, okay, three months from now, I'm gonna be able to do all of this together at speed, yeah. in sequence, the right timing and so on. So mm -hmm. throw the club down for a yep. second. I want you to extend your left arm out like you were at a dress. Right, uh, go ahead and take your setup, sorry, and just sorry. let your left arm hang down at yeah. a dress. Put your right arm, just get it out of the way. It's up there. Yeah, just drag it back. So go. Now, exact same drill. It's going to be a little different because you're, you don't have the benefit of having that club there and your arms across your chest. But the focus is still the same. You're going to turn back, keeping this anchored in. Right knee anchored to the point of the ball. Good. Now bring your hips, your left arm, and swing up. Finish your turn. Finish your turn. Relax. Now, left side coming down. Post up. Left leg straight. Straight. That's not straight. There you go. Open up your hips. Okay. There. And the hand will come right back to him. Mm -hmm. 
shoulder. Uh -huh. So now you're going to see, we're going to start checking the position of your hand coming into impact and the sequence of how it's brought down. But the hand is only going to get moved by your lower body coming down. I've always wondered how you could have the back of your hand facing the ball when you come down. You couldn't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you'll be I... able to. <laughs> yeah, I was always kind of like... Because you know, you're a right side push. When you start yeah. throwing the club from the top, there's so much momentum as you start casting the club and pushing with the right wrist that the right wrist once just it yeah. overtakes the left. That's what causes you to break down. You'll never, ever be able to get a flat left wrist. But you will now. Turn. Anchor that lower body in. Finish your turn. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Lower body coming down. Post ups. Push that left leg in the ground. Open the hip. Good, and the hand will come right back to here, and this is impact. Mm -hmm. Relax that shoulder. There you go, feel the difference? Mm -hmm. So this is your checkpoint now. So when you look in the mirror, the back of your left hand is going to be right about the pant seam or inside of your thigh. Mm -hmm. Hips are, all the other checkpoints are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Flat left foot, straight left knee, open hips, shoulders are relaxed, right heel on the ground. Mm -hmm. So it's the only thing we've added. Everything else is identical. Mm -hmm. Turn, 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 turn. There you go. Awesome. Again. Whoops. Good. Start to look like a golfer. Turn, 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 turn. Don't just swing your arm. Turn. Right here. Ready? Turn. Turn. Just like we were doing that chair drill sitting on the golf cart, right? Good. No, 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 no. Oops. You start right, 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 right. No bueno, right? Yeah. So this yeah. is the trick and why we spent so much time just getting your brain fixated on your core. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you add one more piece on there, some other stuff starts to break down, mm -hmm. which is normal. And that's how we just test you to see how far we can push you. Right? Yeah. So right now, when you start doing this, we're right back to the same stuff. So yeah. the whole thing, forget that you even have an arm there and try to leave it at a dress. Mm -hmm. Just turn your rib cage and let the arm get moved mm -hmm. by your mm -hmm. body rotation, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So your focus is on turning, keeping the lower body anchored in, You're rotating your rib cage. There you go. Now come down. And stop right at impact, right there. So now you can see how you get that nice flat left mm -hmm. wrist and can be mm -hmm. off the face and all that stuff. Nice. Really good. Right heel is up. Really have to work on relaxing that shoulder. You will, for sure. Good. Since you're going to relax it going back. Awesome. You're doing my, great with this. I felt my legs straightening out that time. Good. Every single time that left leg is going to get straight. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to cost you a ton of power and control. Now, take the club, left hand only, just hold it upside down. Yep, just like that. Do the same drill. Nothing changes. Your focus points are still on your core, your legs, your trunk, your checkpoints. Turn, 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 turn. There you go. Nice big turn. Turn, turn. Get going. Yep, yep, yep. Keep turning. There you go. Now come down. Again. Good, stop right there. I'm gonna make one little correction. Now, if I if this is too much, we'll take it out. Yeah. But your wrist is really tight yeah. and it needs to be allowed to set. Uh -huh. You have it bowed, yeah. and when you bow your wrist like this, uh -huh. you don't have very much huh. ability to flex it, right? Uh -huh. If your wrist stays in neutral, you can cock your wrist very, very easy. Uh -huh. Wrist cock is critical for lag, obviously, right? So if you bow your wrist, you're gonna you can't have any lag. Uh -huh. 
So go to the top again. Well, I don't have any lag. You don't have any lag, right? And that's what we're trying to fix. So go to the top again. And we're gonna just keep that wrist in neutral. Don't try to bow your wrist as you go back. Pick up the wrist. There you go. So now you see you've got an angle here, right? Yeah. Good. Now come down and watch what happens to the club as you focus on your body. Look at how much lag you're gonna have. Relax your wrist. There you go. So that's about when you're checking yourself at home, when your left hand is in front of your right thigh, that club should still be parallel to the ground. You should still have this 80 degree angle. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want you to check every time you do this drill. And then when you post up, that's when you release it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Huh. I kind of like. Exactly. You know. Don't ever drill that again. Don't even. Don't even yeah. pretend to practice it. You're already an expert at it. Take a quick look. Let's see where we're at. Nice big turn. Yeah. The hips are a lot better, a lot more mm -hmm. underneath you. Your head's not way off the ball like it was. Uh -huh. Left, you've turned your hips a little bit more than I want, but it's still way better than where you started. Good. Now, we have lag. Huh. Let me pull up your other swing. Now here's where you started. See a big hip turn there, yeah. and a big left right. shift off your head off the ball. And then when your hand's in front of your left thigh. Oh, wow. Well, that's no good, is it? Yeah. Wow. It's probably about 30 degrees right. in difference, wow. right? Substantial. So now you're trying to hit a nail with a hammer with your wrist like this. Mm -hmm. And now you're going like this. Mm -hmm. Now we have all the lag in the world, and we just gotta get rid of it. So this is your checkpoint in the mirror, like I said. Clubs mm -hmm. parallel to the ground, hand in front of the thigh. And now look at how much shafting you got. Mm -hmm. Versus over here, that shaft wow. is already oops, backwards. Yeah. yeah. Those are two completely different golfers. This golfer wow, has- Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. This golfer has no chance of shooting in the 70s. This yeah. golfer can shoot in the 70s easy. Huh. That's all the difference. It's just body movement, getting the body to do the right thing, which will make the arms do the right thing, which will make the club do the right thing, not the other way around. I don't believe it. <laughs> believe it. You're here doing yeah. it. Wow. It's simple. Yeah. So, all we got to do is get you to do these movements quickly, mm -hmm. which will take time because you got to build up the, the repetition, the myelin pathway in your brain. Mm -hmm. But you can, the movements, you're hitting all the positions. Mm -hmm. And then all we got to do is add the right arm and then it's done. Mm -hmm. The whole golf swing. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're spending so much time getting these little tiny little things right. Because you'll see the results that you'll get by putting in that work. And this has only been 45 minutes, so. Why didn't we do this 30 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was 12. <laughs> So I couldn't have helped you back then. I was still skateboarding and had long shaggy hair. Yep, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning your upper body. There you go, good. Shift, relax that wrist. There you go, there's your checkpoint, boom. Let the club release, boom, perfect. Wow. You're a golfer. Huh. Yeah, finish your turn, good. Post up on that left knee. Yeah, so just because I gave you a club yeah. doesn't mean you get to lose your focus over here. Right. It's all the work we did here that created that club position. Yeah. Right? I guess I've never posted up on my left leg. Most golfers for whatever reason, they, they they have a hard time straightening this left leg. They don't want to do it. Yeah. I don't know if it's because it's just the side of our body that's not very coordinated. 
and we just don't ever do this movement, but uh -huh. it's critical. I yeah. want you to imagine that thing's a big old oak tree at impact. It's got to be stable, muscles fully activated. Uh -huh. That's why you know, the video on the site, like squeeze your cheeks. Mm. You want to contract all that stuff so you stabilize. So now you've got this nice solid base to then release the club. Turn, 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 turn. Turn your rib cage, just like on the golf cart. There you go. Legs. Nice. Awesome. I just feel like that's going to be powerful now. It is. That's the whole trick to the golf swing. Sometimes I feel though when you do this, you you can't. Well, I don't want release. you to do that. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're bowing your wrist and swinging your arm in to out. Yeah. Don't do that. Your yeah. arm right now doesn't need to do anything other than what it's told by mm -hmm. your left hip. Turn, 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 turn. Lower body, forget about your arm. Yep, just let it fall down. Yep, just relax it and then it would just release. There you go. No, no tension. Nope, not unless you want to slow it down. I've got tension every place. <laughs> Definitely some tension in there. Turn, 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 not the sharp. There you go. Turn, coil up, post up. There you go. Good. Coil up and post up is kind of what you're going to be feeling going back. You coil up going back, you post up coming down. Let's take a look at your swing plane real quick. Yeah. I always felt that I hands go too far back and I don't have a knot in my point. Yeah, like that. Well, you, you are. It's partly because you're swinging your left arm and you're bending it, so it's allowing the club to move a little bit further. Yeah. I'm not too worried about those little things yeah. um, right now. But the big thing, I'm worried about big picture macro yeah. stuff, right? So what I want to see here, let's compare, let's pull up your uh, earlier down the line. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So this is your first swing. Oh, and I got forward and over the top. All right, and let's see what we did with this guy. Hands come, clubs coming down from the inside. Yeah. So when you compare those two. Your club in this swing is over here, right? It's right over your left forearm. Uh huh. And now it's over here. Uh huh. It's 47 degrees difference. Uh huh. It's pretty significant in golf speak. Uh huh. And you just gotta let it release. So you have never, ever hit the ball from the inside like this. You can see the path yeah. that the club is traveling on is going this way. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. And My here, divots all go over the left. Yeah, of course, right? So your path over here is going like this. These couldn't be any more different. Mm -hmm. Could you go back on this moment? I notice my hands are kind of like broken through the green, if you will. On this one? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah. They're, they're too far out in front of me. Like, oh, that's because I, I'm throwing them over the top. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So your hands actually go inside and then over the top. Up, yeah. And then here, watch what happens to your hands here. So if you trace just your hands. Where your hands are going to go. You got attacked. That's okay. It broke a while back. And... Uh huh. Oh. I'll just make sure it doesn't damage the camera. Yeah, I've already dropped that thing twice too. <laughs> Alright, so now watch your hands. Wow. Let's just put it down for a second. Alright. Watch the path that your hands take on the right. They go under where they went back on. Wow. 
Now, you didn't try and do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. By you using your big muscles, the hands go back and then they drop down on plane. Before, when you use your arms, your hands go inside and then over the back. Um, I went, um, when I do the videos, I've been drawing the line from where the ball is up through my elbow, which elbow. The right elbow plane, yeah. Yeah. And uh, then when I'm swinging down, uh, the good guys have the club coming down that line, mm -hmm. and mine is way out here. Yeah, exactly. Not anymore. And I, and I couldn't figure out how to start doing that. I've been trying to do more. <laughs> it's. Uh, you miss the fundamentals. Yeah. The five-step system starts with weight shift. Yeah. Because the first thing we did was weight shift and rotation. Mm. Outside of that, nothing else matters. You can't manipulate your swing to get the pro positions that you're wanting to achieve unless you master the fundamentals. You know what we need on the website? I, 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 I'm Casey. Point of view. We need tests. <laughs> if you can't, you can't go on unless you pass but we have that. the test. Yeah. That's what the whole deal is. When you sign up and you get your six free yeah. swing reviews, it starts with setup, yeah. and you do you get a pass or fail. Yeah. And that's why we give them those six free reviews. And so if you don't pass setup, we don't care about your takeaway and all this other stuff. You fail, and you got to go back and take that checkout again. Wow. So yeah, we we actually yeah. do that for for members on site. So yeah. if you if you have that on there, you'll see like okay, I want to submit. I, I think my core rotation is good. I want to see if I checked out. I want to do a checkout yeah. for that. And then you just submit it. I think bypass and all of that. Gotcha. Do my video or send it in. You're doing the unlimited review group stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. So there, like. The, uh, big, big mistake. Well, think, yeah. not necessarily a big mistake. I mean, but Chris is going to guide you through all that stuff yeah. in the right sequence that he sees fit. Yeah. But if you miss some of these huge, huge things that we've missed here, then we definitely need to go back to the beginning, which we've done, yeah. master these first little simple things. We only right. spent an hour doing this and right. you've got it. And then you see lag happens, swing plane happens, path happens. Yeah. You're coming, you went from swinging 20 degrees out to in, the 10 right. degrees into out, right? And it's yeah. a 30 degree discrepancy. So it's just getting these fundamentals right. Mm -hmm. And this is, honestly, as I spend all my time, just making people go through the first two steps. So should I go back to ground zero and start going through the first two steps? Y yes, you need to do what, we're, but yeah. you have it now. You yeah. just need to do exactly what we're doing. You okay. need to drill exactly this, yeah. and then adding the left arm, you did really good. Normally a lot of times people will like fall apart, like yeah. their body rotation will stop. You stop turning, that's why I kept saying turn, 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 mm. turn. But if I do that, you turn, right? Mm. You see yourself in the mirror, you turn. So mm -hmm. as long as you do those right, Keep your left arm out there and the club. Mm -hmm. You're doing, that's step four, right? Mm -hmm. Step three is adding the left arm. Step four is adding the golf club. Only uh -huh. thing we have left is adding the, the, the right hand. Uh -huh. But the right hand, we don't want to add that just yet, but I want to show you, you doing it a few times so you at least see what's going to happen yeah. and give you the sequence to go through. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. All right, so let's, I'll try and put this up without killing anybody, including myself. So go ahead and set up again. Okay. And now, I, want, I don't want your right hand on there yet. Okay. Go ahead and set up and go to the top. And I want you to keep your left arm straight. Oh boy, that's gonna be a challenge. Turn, turn, turn. It'll only be a challenge if you swing your arm too much. That's what's happening now, finish your turn. There you go. So now your arm's nice and straight. But the club feels kind of heavy right here, right? Right, it does, yeah. So bring your right hand up so it doesn't feel heavy. That's all you do. That's your whole right arm position. Uh-huh. It's there to act as a support brace because this left arm is kind of weak in this position when you extend it and rotate it internally. Question. Yep. And looking at some of the videos recently, I thought that I should be not here, but up here. You do, but yeah. don't worry about that yet. I'm going to get okay. you there without, I'm going to trick you into getting there. Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> Good, I like that. Cause it... So turn, no, I don't know, no wrist movement. If that club's moving, it's not because you're moving your wrist anymore, it's because you're turning. Okay. Turn, 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 first thing you do. And I'm not taking my hand. No, that's a death move. Yeah. It'll ruin all the good stuff we just did. Turn, 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 turn. Keep turning, keep turning, finish your turn. Okay, good. Bring your right hand up to support it. Excellent. Now your hands are right over your shoulder. Now, come down from there and hit your checkpoints that you just did in the mirror earlier. 
shift and post up. Awesome, now look in the mirror so we can check. We've got all that angle again, right? And now we just gotta release it. Good, and we're not gonna worry too much about the release right now, but that's good. Good. So you go left arm only, get all the way to the top, and you put the right arm up there to support it. Finish your turn. When does your wrist start clocking? Uh, after you've gone by? Uh, technically, there's a, there's a little bit of wrist cock gradually right happening up. throughout the whole swing. Turn, 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 turn. Yep, turn that rib cage. Good. Quick look. Now, slope, slope. You started to move your head that yeah. time. And I don't know if you caught that, but obviously we don't want to get back into that habit. But let's see how we do. So you were really good until right about here yeah, you moved off. Well, yeah. But that's look what you did. I, I straightened my right leg too. A little bit, but you started thinking about grab, grabbing the club with your right hand. That's yeah. when your head moved off the ball. Yeah. When you were just worried about turning, mm -hmm. it looked good. And you're like, oh, let's throw this right hand on there. And you're like, oh, I'm going to go get it. Don't do that. Finish your turn, stop with your left arm up there, and then bring your right arm up after you've made the full move. I often felt that I'd, turn, I'd move my head back like that and turn it so I could turn my hips more. We don't want to hips I know it. I know that, but that's what I'm... So now, got way more like Now, you hung back a little bit there because your head moved so far off the ball. Yeah. You didn't. It was hard for you to get back to the left. But at least we still have that lag angle that we're looking for. And what the way different? Made way different impact position yeah. than before. Way yeah. different. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's what we're trying to do with the right hand. But when you add this right hand in there, you can't go back to your old mistakes, I right? I kind of let this head go back. Exactly. So you go and do your left arm only drill, which really is just body drill. Stop. Make sure this is all right, and then bring your right hand up. If I do. Uh if I have the laser on the right knee uh -huh. and I don't buckle that leg, does that keep me from turning the head back and then the shoulder? No. No. No, it only move, impacts the hips. Turn, 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 keep turning, turn that rib cage. There you go. Now bring your right hand up, it's just underneath to support it. Good. Now come down. Now, you should still feel right now when you're doing this that it's all left hand. Your right hand should barely, yeah, exactly. Should barely be doing anything. Good, mm -hmm. yep, exactly like that. Turn, 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 turn. Good. Stop, stop, stop. Just look at your left wrist. It's starting to get bowed again and you're uh -huh. losing that wrist cock. Uh -huh. So keep it neutral. So. When you go to the top of your swing, you don't want your wrist bowed like this. Mm -hmm. You don't want it cupped like this. It should be anatomically neutral or slightly flat. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing this, again, you can't cock your wrist anymore. You're going to lose all that lag mm -hmm. that we just created. Turn, 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 turn. That shuts the face. Relax your wrist. Relax. There we go. You gotta have way less tension in there. This is where all your speed's gonna come from. Now bring your right hand up to support it. Excellent. Now come down. This is uh... nice. Way better. Again, way better. You have way more lag when you let that left wrist stay. Let like this. Let your arm just hang down with your chest. Just totally relax. That's anatomically neutral. Mm -hmm. you, you have full mobility. You can deviate your wrist like this. Now, now bow your wrist and try to do the same thing. Right? It's locked in there, right?
Now I think I, I bowed my uh, left hand so I could get that sensation of getting out like that. The band-aid fix. Yeah. yeah. Not the right way to go about it. Does all this make sense? It does, it makes a lot of sense. So go through your checkpoints. Every single day for the next week, I'd start out sitting on a chair. Just yeah. rotate, activate these obliques again, get them awake in the morning and just start rotating. So you start telling your brain, the first move off the ball is not this, right? Mm -hmm. It's this, mm -hmm. it's turning to move the golf ball. Mm -hmm. Then just go through the same sequence. Start with your arms across your chest, Go through the whole same deal like we just did. Check yourself in the mirror. Go through your checkpoints. Mm -hmm. Post it up on the left side. Left foot flat. Right foot down. Left knee straight. Hips open, shoulders square. Mm -hmm. Then put your left arm out there. Do that as long as it still looks good. Add that golf club. Flip it upside down. That looks good. Flip it right side up. That looks good. Add the right arm. Mm -hmm. As you keep doing this, keep challenging yourself to add speed, but don't go really, right. really fast if you're doing it wrong. Right. I want you to go as fast as you can doing it right. Right. And then you just keep challenging yourself. You get a little bit faster every day, right? And then as you keep doing that, eventually you'll be able to go all, of, obviously all the way full speed with the right hand mm -hmm. on there, but don't be in a hurry to, to throw that right hand on. That's mm -hmm. where people typically make a mistake is they want to start wailing away on balls right mm -hmm. away. And you saw how much you're having to concentrate on these macro movements at first. Hitting balls is, is foolish. It's not mm -hmm. going to help you get any better. It's just going to make you repeat the same existing movement pattern you've already got. I've been doing it for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're really experienced at casting the club and swinging over the top. But now yeah. <laughs> you, you've got a little bit of experience of making good, powerful rotation and having lag coming down mm -hmm. in a great impact position. Mm -hmm. But that's a baby flower. You need to water it, nurture it, and give it nutrients every day. Don't mm -hmm. stomp on it by going out and wailing away on balls. Mm -hmm. Any questions for me? Nope. Awesome. That's fantastic. It was great meeting you. Thanks for coming up.